Chapter 7 May 20th, 2017 I lay in my bed on a Saturday morning, achy and unable to move. All my work with Noel gone. I needed to start over. I didn't want to give up without a fight. Despite my pain from last night's restless sleep, I crawled out of bed and went straight to the computer. I pulled up my ad for TCS and made a few changes to the deadlines and the artwork. The biggest change involved replacing my stock Tyler photo with one I took of Noel. Before I could post it, I got a call. Hey, Jason. It was Noel. Look, I wanted to apologize for what I said, and my behavior in Vegas wasn't the best. A single tear slithered down my nose. Yeah, I shouldn't have taken you there, and I'm really sorry for dragging you into this mess. Both of our lives would have been better if we hadn't even met. Jason, cut the crap. I'll still model for you, but here's a piece of advice. Don't go yapping up the wrong tree. If you're looking for a boyfriend, then maybe go to a bar, look online, but look for a boyfriend. If you want a model, then look for a model. You can't be deceptive like that and expect a guy to fall for it. I wiped my eyes. So, any place to start? You're on your own there. We can be friends and I'll still model for you. But if you want a boyfriend that badly, you'll have to look for one yourself. I sniffled. Okay then, I'll see you sometime next week. Yeah, man. Before I go, can I get Tyler's number? I want to apologize to him, too. It's 702-555-3107. Thank you. Noel hung up. I still had him, but I needed someone else, too. I'd call Tyler, but he wouldn't know love if it smacked him in his privates with a jerk circle session afterward. I deleted the edited TCS advertisement and gave Drake a call instead. Hey, you free? Yeah, what's up? He said in his stoner-like voice. Can we meet at Price? Yeah, bro, what time? Today? Well, I was going to go to do some studying in Geisel, but hey, a chat won't take too long. I'll see you when you get here. Okay, I'll meet you on the second floor. I hung up. Drake was a well-built man himself. Half Hawaiian on his mother's side, he was the athletic type, and the second best water polo player on the university's team after his boyfriend, Captain Gage Carson the rich hunk who breathes water polo like we do air. I never met the guy, but from what Drake told me, not only was he the Triton's best player, but also the hottest. I left my apartment complex and traveled north about half a mile before setting foot at UCSD. The eucalyptus trees infesting campus provided ample shade from the baking sun, but no protection from the tree's scent enhanced by the humidity. Drenched in sweat, I took the path north to Geisel, it was the easiest way to price. The first defining feature I saw from the price center's west side was its multi-tiered waterfall formation, flowing from the outside in. The lounge was on the east side, so I had to go through the whole student union to meet up with Drake. I walked down the miniature flights of steps, parallel to the tiered waterfalls, and walked inside. The bustling and rowdy queues for food greeted me as I passed through the sliding glass doors. I found myself in a silvery metal jungle of square tables and crisscross beams. Several posters and PSAs lined the railings above, some of them demotivating the motivators and others liberating the liberators. I walked up the metal steps in the central atrium and found Drake waiting on the second floor lounge. Come on, Jace, let's sit down, he said, pointing to two oversized brown and tan couches facing each other against the stucco wall and in front of a cork board containing more demotivators. Both of us faced across from each other, sitting on separate couches. The cushions had seen better days. Beads of sweat formed from Drake's platinum blonde locks, with a few more coming from the dimples of his cheeks. His usual longboard and preferred method of traveling campus was absent. He had jogged upstairs from class, carrying his usual load of textbooks on his back. How do you do it? I asked as he wiped his face with a cloth in his pocket. Do what, bro? Drake stared into my eyes with a look of confusion. How'd you get a guy to like you? You still don't know, Jace? Drake put his palm to his own face. Oh, I know. I sprang off the couch. I'll plot posters here on campus looking for boyfriend-free guys. You can't just do that, bro, and expect to get laid. That's kid shit. You want to know what to do? Well, bro, I've got you covered, man. Why don't you just tell me how you met Gage? The captain's simple, Jace. Talk to him about polo, and he'll be wrapped around your finger. How does that help? I've got this model working for me named Noel, but he doesn't want to date me, and he doesn't know anything about water polo. 
Plenty of fish in the sea, bro. Ever go to Hillcrest? I knew about Hillcrest, but it was so far out of the way for me. It was the definitive gay community in town, but I had no reason to go there. Other than Drake, I had never met any other gay guys besides Noel. Even in high school, every guy was straight, or said they were. Still, it was worth a shot. I've never been there, know any places? Hold on a sec. Drake got up from the couch and took out a spiral notebook from his backpack. He tore out a blank page from the middle and began to draw an unscaled map. He rambled on and on over pointless bar names that I would forget unless he wrote them down. I'd pick this one if you really want a good time, or maybe you wanted something like this. Drake constantly switched frames of reference with his pen. His speech didn't line up at all with what location he pointed at on the paper. He was quick at writing places down, but his handwriting sucked. Which one's the best for me to meet, guys? That's all I want to know. Just go here. Drake pointed towards a bar near the middle of the map. The name of the place was too illegible for me, but Drake spoke like he knew the place like the back of his hand. Thanks, man. I started to get up. But seriously, Jason, I wasn't done, bro. Sit back down. Can I ask you something else? Yeah? I've seen your website, and your photos need a lot of work. That Noel guy you hired is totally hot, but I think you need to work on your lighting skills. How so? I scratched my head. Well, bro, I think I know a guy who could help. Dustin Walker, he's one of my polo buddies, and he's in a band, Air Force Trauma, or something like that. Anyway, he's posed for a few photo books and stuff, nothing national or anything. Can I meet him? Sure, he was a rock star, but they were models in their own way. Having a body like Noel's would have been a bonus, less work for me. Come watch one of our water polo games, bro. If you show up, I'll be sure to hook you too. I nodded and gave Drake a pretty, almost cartoonish smile. He was going to be disappointed. Even a sports phobe like me knew water polo was a fall sport. The first game wouldn't be for three more months. A fair warning, Jace, the guy's straight and hitched, so you can't have him. I sighed. Then again, not every potential hottie was gay. I couldn't afford to wait three months for a stupid game to meet Dustin. Any way to meet him sooner? Sorry, bro, can't help you there. We don't hang out other than practice. This might help you. Drake flipped through his notebook to just pass the next divider. Opposite the tab, a 5 by 7 portrait acted as a loose bookmark between the section's beginning and what looked like biology notes. The portrait itself depicted a blonde, icy, blue-eyed man wearing a frigid expression. A pair of black and cyan-highlighted headphones wrapped around his neck, a thin cord traveling down his chest from the left speaker. It was hard to tell from the shoulders up, but he didn't resemble Noel at all. Drake handed me the photo. That's Dustin. If you see him on campus, and I know you live close enough to walk here, be sure to wave and say hi to him. He's a little shy, so don't expect him to wave back, but, uh, smile anyway. Like hell, I'd spend my day roaming around the university looking for a rock star athlete who blended in with everyone else around here, I thought. There had to be another way. You have his number? No, bro, I told you, I only know the guy because of Polo. If you want Dustin before August, you'll have to find him yourself. I tapped my forehead. So Hillcrest, this rocker guy, anything else? Nothing, really. Thanks, man, I said as I got up off the couch and headed back to my car. Call me, bro, anytime. Drake got up and waved goodbye at me. If I don't answer, I'm at class or practice. He left Price in the opposite direction, 